Hey guys, welcome to a recap of Indian Matchmaking Episode 4, A Top Not Appreciator. So the show opens up with Seema and she's with her family, she's with her daughter, she's with her goddaughter, she's with her son-in-law, she's with her husband, and they're pretty much talking about how dating has changed. The trend is now that people get married past 30, and that is because most of the youth they want to focus on their career but Sima sees dating and seeking marriage as not a trend and that people need to stop waiting at 30 and at 20 they should find their match and proceed and move forward but the kids her kids are telling her no that's not the case it's not a common thing anymore that's pretty much a thing of the past and you know the kids they take priority of finding their career um, to make their mark before they even consider looking for marriage for themselves. So Seema, of course, she believes that 30 is too late and that this is not this is not interesting at all, that this, you know, matches are made in heaven and, you know, not by trends. So that was pretty much Seema's outlook on the situation. What are the trends are going in terms of dating? So we're now in davis california for biscash and he is on his date with anjali guys i was so nervous for him because yeah he was being picky and hesitant on going on a date with anjali he pretty much decided to go out on the date with anjali because she was convenient she's right here in california he doesn't really have to put in much effort so this i was kind of hesitant to how this date was gonna go but i was pleasantly shocked you know, she is a lot of what he's asking on his list. The only thing that was missing is that she doesn't speak Hindi. So we're going to find out if this is going to be a deal breaker. This could cause some hesitation for Viskash, but she is so considerate, so sweet. And let me talk a little bit about the date. So they went painting. So they're drinking wine and they're doing paintings together. And I thought that was a cute date, very light, very fun, something that you get to cooperate and work with your partner. And pretty much they have small talk. They chat about family. They end up talking about her dog. And it became very clear that if he doesn't get along with her dog, then this may not move forward. So I thought it was cute, fun, small talk, but I'm still trying to see if there is chemistry, if there's passion, if there's a connection. So with her, I thought she was such a great date for him to kind of get his foot into the water, into dating. She seemed very lighthearted, very sweet, very easygoing. She's so relaxing, so calm, as compared to Viskash, who kind of portrays himself being high energy, doing this, doing that. But I thought the date kind of flow, it was very different from if you think of Priya, because Priya's date um, with Jay, they had a conversation, but it was lighthearted, but there was not no sense of calmness. It was so serious, as opposed to Vishkash date with Anjali, where they had a conversation. It was lighthearted. You don't know if they like each other yet, but they're still in the getting to know stage. So I thought this was like a good introduction to him dating and seeing how his match goes with her. So I, I was actually shocked because I thought... He was going to be not as interested into her because she doesn't speak Hindi and he seemed to primarily speak Hindi, but he actually appreciated what I appreciated in Anjali, which is that she's super calming. And, you know, I, I sense that her presence kind of calmed his nerves down. So he seemed like he may be interested in another date with her. I would love to see them on another date to kind of see their dynamic and how it grows to see if it's something that can go in the positive direction. But, you know, we don't know. But at least Vizca, she confirms with us that he's going to ask her out on a second date. So we'll get to see a little bit more to see how they progress. But that's a good sign for Vizca. I'm happy for Vizca. So now we're in New Delhi to check on our girl, Arusha Lee. So Arusha Lee is having what I would say girl chat, but she's with the guys. She's a tomboy. She says she's with the boys. The boys are her friends. The friends are guys. And, you know, they know each other since grade one. So they go back, all the way back, 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 back. So 
I was thinking just based on this, my impression is, is that for any person that she's trying to date or get to know, this may be tough for him to get into this friend group because this friend group is all guys. It's like, where is the feminine touch? Like these, I understand that guys can have like femininity, but I feel like girl chat with your girls is something different as opposed to just getting the perspective of just guys. So she asked her guy friends on their opinion on who would be suitable for her to date. And they recommend someone who's caring, someone who's uh, very kind, patient, and kind of calming. Because I feel like Rushali, she's super, super serious. And I get that impression too. She's like a serious, serious gal. Like, uh... She's always overthinking things a lot. So it would be nice for her to find someone who's calming, who's patient, and have her interests. You know, originally she stressed that it was important to be matched with someone who saw beyond her pretty face. And I completely understand her because she comes from that pageant world where everything is focused on beauty, 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 beauty. So you always wonder, oh, do they see beyond that? So, you know, she tells the her friends that the matchmaker have found this guy who likes poetry. And they were so impressed. They were like, oh, that's perfect. They were super happy, very supportive of this match. And, you know, Risha Lee, she was saying how, you know, she kind of had some doubts because, yeah, he liked poetry, but... It, it wasn't like the same level. It was like, it wasn't the same match. Cause like, yeah, two people can have an interest of the same thing, but there can be an interest in a different sector of it. Like it's not, it's, it still doesn't mean it's going to be a match. And then, you know, Rushali, she mentioned the other guy who was in her space too as well. He's an actor and that he uh, does um certain types of genre of, uh, a performance that's not necessarily her genre she kind of also emphasized that you know he's also far away too so her mindset is that it seems like she wants someone who is local to her so she doesn't have to break out that comfort zone which you know I find an issue for her because obviously she's been in her comfort zone but not getting the results that she desires so maybe to get the results she wants she has to get a little bit uncomfortable a little bit more open more flexible more open mind because she does seem to have kind of like a box of who she wants as her partner and mind you you know as I said to you, this group looks like it's going to be hard for anyone to come in who's interested in dating Rushali because these guys, they're saying that, oh, I want to know your matches. Let's stalk him. Let's get to know him. And I'm like, yikes, yikes. I, you know, I like the support Rushali has because she does have a support system that really backs her and want the best for her. Um... You know, but I think that she should be more patient, more open minded because she does feel like she's kind of rushed to, you know, move along and find someone to get married to. Uh, like I said before, I think of Rochelle, I think of her as an overthinker. She realizes that, too, as well. And so she even takes note that she has to take it easy and not worry so much about marriage, but getting to know these people and finding her perfect match. So let's figure cross for Rushali because come on, um, get into it. Let's have fun. So now we get an update about Priya and she's on her third date, y'all. Remember, she went on a date with Bobby. She went on a date with Jay. Now she's on a date with Vital. And so Vital, he pretty much checked off an important item on her list. He has a top knot his hair goes up he is not bald she has the guy who has a full head of hair and she was extremely excited to actually meet him initially and you could see that there was instant attraction so you can tell she really really likes him but she's a little bit hesitant and she doesn't want to kind of jump the horse so they're on a date and they're gonna play cricket so this is again another fun opportunity where these two couples this this couple is going to work together to, you know, try something that they don't typically do. So it's a cute, fun day. And I thought, you know, it was kind of hilarious to even watch them try to do well at a sport to impress one, each one another. So they 
they are having fun. They are enjoying each other's company. They're teaching each other and getting along through this hobby. And I thought they were just so cute together. I thought, you know, they look like they go together. Like it was picture perfect. And I thought, okay, maybe third time's the charm. This is her third um, match. This is her third date. So I thought she was getting some love from Sima. And, you know, Priya, you can tell Priya, she's so happy because he is her type. So, of course, that is checked off as a list of concerns, but she's still very cautious because, you know, even though the conversation is flowing and they flirt and it's such a fun time for them, she's hesitant and she wants to see him again to see, like, how things pan out. She does have a good feeling and I'm confident for her too as well because attraction is like one step to the end of getting to what you want now you have to figure out if you guys are compatible if you have the same hobbies you have the same interests do you get along with one, one another during your time that you spend together so i thought i thought this was a home run you know i felt i was thinking back at bobby because bobby you know he was high energy and he put his best effort into the date but for her it was really about the attraction i think that if she couldn't get over that she was not open in making a match so luckily for her sima she pulled out this top knot guy and she has attraction towards him so this may be moving up and forward for priya but we'll see we'll see we'll see so next back we're back to Rishali. We're back to Rishali. Rishali, Rishali, Rishali. So she is talking to her life coach, relationship advisor. And she explains, you know, she talks about like her growing up and how she's been always super attached to her family. And why is that? And why is that hindering her from her dating life and moving forward to marriage? So, you know, Rishali, she went to boarding school she was, she was away from her parents for quite some time. And then when she was with her family, her family would always have issues. They would argue. And, you know, usually she felt like she has some sort of responsibility to keep the family together. So from that, she did not want to leave the sight of her parents. So I thought, okay, she's now understanding the method to her actions, to why she's in the situation that she is and you know usually she is looking for perfection she wants to have everything checked off before she even proceed and if you look for something to be perfect you'll never move forward into your destination or you'll be waiting forever and i think usually she's making that conscious decision to not look for perfection and you know she she is trying. <laughs> she is trying. And I felt like this meeting was so necessary for her. And I think this is a great job for uh, Rushley to do counseling because I think she would have went on multiple dates and not and oh and still find some sort of issue or a reason why not to go forward with the person, which is not a way to live, not a way to live. Not everything is going to be perfect. No such thing as the perfect person. So this was a good this was a good strategy by Sima to send Rushali over to a relationship advisor to kind of go through her thoughts and to reassess some things. So guys, we are back to Priya and she's having girl chat with her friends. And pretty much she is like going on about all the matches that she had experienced through her time with Sima. And we she talks about Bobby. And I remember Bobby, and we see past clips, footage of Bobby, and I'm like, I hope we find a match for Bobby. Bobby, there's someone for him, so he doesn't stay in the friend zone. So she says how she didn't have romantic feelings for Bobby, and that there was no sense to rip off his clothes. She talked about his height, and I was like, oh, this is so much. This is so hard. I can't imagine Bobby having to hear this. And then she reflects on her experience with Jay. And now with Jay, she talked about how dry the conversation was and that, you know, there was no sense of chemistry or passion or any excitement for her to want to move forward. But when she talked about the third guy, she, she talked about the third guy, she described them as Aquaman and her friends are like oh my gosh Aquaman Jason Momoa 
she's dating Jason Momoa. I mean, that's a lot of women's celebrity crush. So she really, really, really likes him. And she shows a picture of him to the ladies. And they co-sign it already. They're like, okay, sign, sign deal. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's move forward. So, you know, of course, Priya, she's still thinking about like, okay, is this right? Let, uh, um, she, she wants to focus more on asking him the right questions because, of course, again, I would like to stress that she is attracted to him. So that's crossed off. So now the focus is, is there a connection? So, yes, our girl is super cautious, but she's also, you know, a happy, excited to actually find someone that she's interested to get to know further like to go on another date with so i am too i'm excited to see what the next date's gonna give because i want to see if she's gonna you know end up with him or if she has to go on more on other dates because i was so i felt so bad for priya i saw felt so bad for priya after her second date because no one should go through a dry conversation at a date that is so hard oh my god if you had any bad dates let me know down in the comments below but i think the worst date is having dry conversations where it doesn't go anywhere and you have to be polite. Oh my god, that is so terrible. So we're back over to Viscash and he's having a FaceTime with Sima. Sima is getting the update on Viscash to know how his date went with Anjali. So Viscash tells um Sima that he went on three days with Anjali, and I'm like, we only saw one. So what happened in the other two? So apparently they went on a second date to go and they went hiking. And I'm like, okay, I'm hiking. I wouldn't be a fan. I wouldn't want to go hiking. On the third day, they actually had a lunch dinner with her brother and sister-in-law. So he met a little bit, some of her family. And then they had a dinner. So the dinner is where, you know, we get some more information to understand, like, I would get a perspective of how they feel about each other. And so he rated, you know, the day, the food as a 7 out of 10, but the company he gave a 9 out of 10. So I thought, oh, wow, that's pretty good. He likes her. But, you know, it was funny. And I like the personality of Jolie. She's a jokester. She says, oh, I went up half a point from the previous date. So I'm like, oh, so this is their thing. They're rating, you know, being very transparent to how they're feeling. And she wanted to know, what did she do to get a half a point up more? So I just like that she knows she kind of goes with the flow. She's not easily insulted because I can see how someone can feel insulted if they get what they considered a poor rating. Because everyone wants to be considered a 10. Like, you want to be a 10 out of 10. So uh, it's, it's kind of funny that you know how calm and patient she is with this gosh. Especially for her age, she's quite young. So it's interesting that, you know, she's going with the flow with these cars. So she's having a great time with him from what we saw in um, a footage that they had showed us. And, you know, for him, his feedback is that he is confused why such a young person have an interest in him and wants to spend time with him. This cause he is sensing his clock is ticking. He's almost 40. And he was saying to Sima how he wants someone who speaks Hindi. And he doesn't want to kind of waste time with Anjali. So he's not taking Anjali serious. So I was a little bit disappointed in that because I thought the date went well. And I like how Sima kind of said to him that, no, you should give it a try. You are still getting to know Anjali and that you need to be flexible because, of course, you're not going to get everything that you want on your list. And if just speaking Hindi is enough to say that you don't want to go on another date with her, I think that's being too hard. So Sima, she stresses that, you know, you go on more dates, be more flexible, be more patient. So we'll see, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like he's going to find another excuse uh, what to not like about Anjali. Because Anjali, I feel like she, she check off a lot of his list. So if Hindi is the thing, the deal breaker, then wow. Then Seema has to look precisely for someone who speaks Hindi, okay? So now we are in Durham, North Carolina, and we're visiting and we're seeing Vero and Ashe having like a lunch they're having lunch with her family and i thought this was so cute uh ash ashay he's so integrated into her family like he's super super comfortable and they were talking about pretty much their trip 
to India and how it went. So they share all the positive news and the family could have been any more happier. They were very excited that their daughter was well received by, by Ashe's family and that the trip was such a fun and joyous trip. So I seeing the connection. Ashe, he feels the connection. Vera, she's super, you know, she's getting more confident about the situation and, you know, they're out in North Carolina to go to a friend's wedding. So I think that, you know, things are coming close for Vera. You know, I'm sensing an engagement coming up soon. So I'm excited for when it's their turn. And this, this has to be, you know, such an interesting situation because I remember Vera, she went on a few dates and ultimately she found her match with Ashe. So I felt like this was like a slow build but you know they're both realistic they're both open-minded to it and i can't wait to see that for others who are on this show so i hope we get to see more of bobby i want we should see how you have to find him a date i would love to find him a date and then you know with viscash i think viscash may need to find someone else because i feel like he crossed his mind about Anjali. Now with Rushali, Rushali, I think she needs someone new, someone new to date. Maybe she needs to continue dating because after her counseling, her therapy session, I feel like she came to a realization and I feel like now she's in a more better mindset to go out and date with the tools that she now has. So you guys, we're watching this. We're still in this together. What are your thoughts? You know, do you think Priya and Vital is going to be a good match? I'm hoping so. I want another perfect match on this show. So guys, stay tuned for more recaps. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate every one of you who you who come to follow me on this journey and stay tuned for more recaps of not only Indian matchmaking but the other shows that I have in store for you guys so as always take care and share as much kindness as possible bye guys